Welcome to Work Life Cyber. Oh, I have missed saying this. Now, um, I miss all of you as well, um, but I've been so busy. Uh, I'm not even pr uh, promising consistency from now, but the community has grown so much. When I came back and saw that we are almost a thousand people, subscribers, what? That's amazing. I am so impressed that so many of you are putting in the time to kind of learn about um, um, your field, whatever it is you're doing in cybersecurity, in tech. It's, it's wonderful. I am glad that everyone is seeking knowledge, including me, right? Because some of your questions, I do not know the answers to. And then I go and ask my boss, I ask my colleagues, I do my research, I do things. It's easier for me that way because I, I, I have people to ask, right? And so thank you for subscribing, all you new people. And um, for all the older people, older subscribers, thank you for staying on with me. Even though I don't um, do a whole lot of recording, I will try and be consistent. But it got so busy real quick and um, we'll see. My last video, which was a long, long, long time ago, I think I was talking about Rex. So I'm going to continue i'll stay on risk for a little while and one of your questions was what is the difference between inherent risk and residual risk here's how you can remember what an inherent inherent risk is and what a residual risk is uh if you've been with on this channel for all 12 seconds we've been here you know that you go learn all the jargons, all the technicalities, everything, and then you come to my channel for us to break it down into layman's terms into how you can use it at work, into how you can actually use it in your words, how you can understand using basic day-to-day -day, um, examples. So inherent risk is all the risk that exists even before any controls are put in place. Residual risk is after the risk has been put in, um, controls have been put in place, what is left over because there are certain things that will happen and that will happen that will happen regardless of what safeguards you put in place right controls means safeguards guidelines safety measures right so inherent risk think of it and i did mention it think of it as inheritance inherent inheritance that's how you will remember for those of you who are studying for exams right inherent risk is what are the risks that exist to you just by being you if you're a driver or the risk that you are prone to an accident you're prone to someone hitting your car you're prone to dozing off and going down a ditch all of these are your inherent risk what will be a residual risk for a driver is now you're going to put controls in place with the car makers have already ahead of us you're going to put um a seat belt just in case there's an accident and what you're going to do to prevent an accident the mirrors right um, um, the airbags to push you back so that the impact is not too much um, but the likelihood is still the same right so you put all these things in place to reduce of course the likelihood and the impact but after these controls are put in place the seat belts the mirrors for you to see everywhere the um even there are cars these new cars where when you're going it notifies you when you're going to off your lane kind of thing all of those things are in place these are all controls now you've put all these controls in place and driving your minding your own business driving following all the rules following all the um speed limit speed limit is a control yes in this case i'm just giving day-to-day -day example minding your business singing your hallelujah praise and then bam a car from nowhere just comes to hit your car that's your residual well, that's an event but the residual risk here will be that after all these controls are put in place a car can still come and hit you Yes, you have controls to prevent accident, but anything can happen even after those controls. So that's what makes it a residual risk. So inherent risk is just by being a driver, you are prone to an accident. You are prone to um, your car stopping in the middle of the road. It doesn't, accident is not the only risk, you know. Um, 
um, if you're like me, who always waits till your car is empty before refilling, you have a risk of running out of gas, right? So all of these are inherent risk. The residual risk will be after you put gas in, you make sure your Freon is good. You make sure your oil is fine. Everything is fine. Your car still stops. Now you don't know what is wrong, right? So you now have to go and check it. So whatever made it the car stop, that will be your residual risk. You have done all your controls, but still something happened or there was a control failure or the control wasn't effective, whatever the case. Whatever happens after you have put all your safety measures. And then the very easy example you have your home you bought your nice home with your children dolores and o'neill and your husband and then you put a padlock nobody uses padlocks anymore but for the purpose of you understanding so okay let me start with inherent time inherent risk so with your you you bought your house everything you even bought a nice neighborhood everything what is your inherent risk thieves coming the possibility of a thief coming in if you're in a place like california the possibility of the whole house burning down is certain places in california the possibility of your whole house burning down is your inherent risk so you put a padlock nobody uses padlocks anymore and i'm sure some of these new gen zians don't know what a padlock is i hope that's not insulting but i don't think anybody uses um padlock but anyway you put a padlock in or you put a ring let's use ring you put ring thing you see everybody that's walking around your house you do everything you have um whatever measures that uh, fireproof you have fireproofed everything that's so inherent risk here is the possibility of people thieves coming in the possibility of fire the possibility of flooding whatever now residual is that you have already put controls like padlock, fireproof windows, fire, fireproof, whatever they do to fireproof a place. You've done all that. Those are the controls you've put in place. But there is this thief who is smart and probably works for ring and can disable the ring without you knowing and then walk in or then one day you forgot the ring. I don't know if you use it. I don't use ring. The ring doorbell um maybe it's the it's faulty you didn't even know it was faulty so even though you have controls there there's still a possibility of a thief coming in because the ring stopped working and you didn't know or someone was able to disable it or the ring wasn't as effective as you thought it would or the shutters or the fireproof your house still the possibility of god forbid a bomb coming or a plane crashing into your house so you do have controls there the residual here is that um, anything can happen, really. So residual risk is inherent risk plus controls equals, resi equals residual. You put the controls there, but there are risks that will happen that will happen. Now, let's bring it to work. You work for any company that has a data center, right? Because they and not every one of the application is in is cloud based, and even if it's cloud based, maybe they host something I don't know, it's hybrid or something. So you put all the safeguards for the data center, everything, nothing is going to burn, blah 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 blah. Inherent risk for a data center is the possibility of it burning down. Right today, I'm on the fire um, examples, but. We'll stick with it. The possibility of it burning down, right? You have put all the play, the controls in place. Then one of your workers, the admins, goes in there and they are not supposed to take smoke in there, but maybe this one is just lawless. Or some of the wires touches, like, you know, and then it sets, it's set on fire. You do have controls. I hope I'm making myself clear or maybe I'm talking too much. You do have controls for to put fire, fire extinguisher. You have um, um, multi-factor authentication. Anybody who goes into the data center, they do um, facial um, authentication, whatever. You've put so many controls in place. But whilst everybody was sleeping, Maybe the, the one of the wires um, was faulty and went aflame. Nobody can plan for this, right? 
And so the whole place, but everyone is sleeping. Even if no one is sleeping, it takes what? Very little time for fire to go ablaze, right? So the whole place is burned down. We can't burn down, right? So that becomes your residual risk. Um, I'm kind of losing touch with all these recording things because all I'm thinking of is when I'm going to finish this recording and how I'm going to edit it. <laughs> but I hope I have made sense. When you come to work, when you bring it to work, how you test inherent risk and one of you, one of you guys helped me out with the questionnaire for inherent risk. And it was, it saved me a ton of research because these days we are all flooded by a lot of information. So you, you have to do a lot of digging, get some trust. There's no way to see who is telling the truth. Things change so many times from website to website. But whilst I was talking to a friend of mine, he was like, oh, I can share our inherent risk questionnaire with you. And then you can take it from there. It saved me so much time. She explained and explained. I took my time, wrote everything, and it saved the day. So the way you test inherent risk is you send questionnaires. Most companies already have their inherent risk questionnaire um, in place. If they don't, they, most likely you can find a friend like my friend and get it. Or you can Google, go to hhs.gov, go to... HI SAC, even ISACA, I'm sure has it has a set of inherent risk. Go to next um the gov, I think that's their website, and look for inherent risk questionnaire. Once you've received the questionnaire, now you test the controls, you put controls in place, um, which most companies have. If it's network protection, you have um multi-factor authentication. Some companies don't allow um um vendors to remote into their network there are all these safeguard controls in place to safeguard network once you put all these controls in place you test the controls make sure they are effective and then whatever risk is remains because some of these applications just won't have multi-factor authentication is it is what it is you know so after all of these controls are in place now what remains is the residual risk right and so you can test residual risk by really texting the controls to see what controls are actually effective and the ones that are not effective. And then um, you try and figure out what of which ones of your application, what risk remains, even after all the controls in place, the controls that fail, the controls that won't work for some of the application. I am 14 minutes already. Um, I tried to make this in five minutes. So I hope I have made some sense um and comment with your questions comment with your thoughts because we are all learning i'm learning from you you guys are learning from me and other people read the comments and um i think i am breaking it down and make, simplifying it but i have probably confused the heck out of someone but if you comment then um it may clarify for somebody else give me examples day-to-day -day examples and i can add it to my um repertoire I appreciate you sticking here with me and I hope you stay around so we can all learn from each other. Bye-bye.